Nice. Welcome to Movies Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and it's pretty obvious that I am a huge van enthusiast. My last van purchase, this 1991 Chevy G20 van conversion, was recently restored by the Car Wizard, and now everything works inside of this beautiful oak and foamy padded interior, including the TV and VCR. But I've had many other vans in the past on this channel, starting with the wood paneled Dodge Caravan, as well as the Toyota Previa Supercharged, that was a really cool van, and the Nissan Quest. So obviously I have a little bit of bias when it comes to vans, but when I saw this, a Chevy 2500 Express long wheelbase nine passenger Explorer conversion, it made me think everybody should be looking at these things, especially if they're shopping for, say, a new Suburban, a new Denali, or a new Escalade. Because this is less than a fully equipped Suburban Denali or Escalade, but it offers a lot more. Basically, this thing is like a private jet on four wheels, and in some ways, it's even better. It's really amazing. Now, while it is less than a new Denali or Escalade, it is still very expensive. You gotta realize a new fully loaded Escalade now is over $100,000, a Denali $80,000, $90,000. So this with a suggested manufacturer price of $80,000 is quite a bit less, but that's just a suggested retail price. If you look online, you can find these brand new advertised for around $70,000, which is way, way less than a new Escalade Platinum, and you get a whole lot more. But the chassis that it sits on is a Chevrolet cargo van that you would have bought for $35,000 for work. They take that and completely transform it into this, this crazy high top conversion van with a fade paint job, custom wheels, body kit. Basically buying one of these is like buying a really high quality version of a Pimp My Ride episode. And they do start with a dinosaur of a van. This Express van is actually the successor to my G20. It replaced it in 1995 or six, and they've had a few upgrades, a big one in 2003, but it is the same chassis, basically the same van from the mid 90s going into 2020. And under the hood is a six liter Vortec that you can't see because it's a van, but the old school six liter Vortec with 340 horsepower that you get in trucks and SUVs 10 years ago. So they can use that old engine that doesn't have cylinder deactivation and a lot of the complicated stuff, so it lasts a really, really long time. These things were built to work. They weren't built for consumer use. Now you're probably thinking this 30 year old design with all this extra stuff tacked on it and weighing it down just drives terribly, but you couldn't be more wrong. This is probably the last of the dinosaurs that offers this old school luxury experience that I love so much, which I shall show you now on the tour of this amazing private aircraft on wheels, basically. Before we go inside where the real magic happens on this Explorer van, let me show you the cool stuff on the outside first. Much like the G20 custom vans of the day, this one does have a custom paint job. It is a fade from a brown to a, uh, a lighter brown, which uh, brown is wonderful. Of course, these wheels are not factory oversized alloys, and this body kit <laughs> it's just hilarious, a body kit for a giant conversion van, but it does look really good. Now, Explorer is a company, their own independent company. They're not owned by GM or anybody else, and they have been converting conversion vans for probably 40 or 50 years. They're one of the few last surviving ones. And what makes them really special is they do everything in-house, just about everything in-house. So these show up as basically basic cargo vans. They don't even have windows in them yet. So they do all the work in-house of putting in these windows and all the molds for this body kit. They also saw open the roof and they make this high top conversion, which this is actually a giant window that spans all the way across. And they managed to do this without taking out any of the structural safety things uh, including the side impact airbags, which they put a giant curtain all the way down the side of these things as a safety improvement. Uh, they don't compromise any of that. But the look of this thing is just ridiculous, and it is on a three-quarter ton, a, a 2,500 truck platform, so it has a hitch, and these things are rated to tow up to 9,000 pounds, I think. Probably a little less since there's some stuff in there, but still, these things can definitely tow. One other thing they add on the outside is uh, power running boards, which go almost to the ground. I mean, it's like three inches off the ground. It's not really necessary, but they put that in anyway. On this side, it's a full size. And on the driver's side, obviously you don't need a big one. So it's just a little mini step up, which 
<laughs> it's just all over the ground. It's not necessary. But then when you look at this seat and see how high up it is, I can see why they think you need a staircase to get up into this thing if you're not six feet tall like me. But the seats are another thing that they completely make in-house. They're power operated. The leather, well, I think it's fake leather, but it's so soft. I think they call this ultra leather and honestly, it feels nicer than real leather. It is so soft and they make these in-house just like how you used to make car seats with lots of thick, foam padding, tons of adjustments. It is so, so nice. It is definitely the most comfortable seat that I have ever sat in in a new car in a very, very long time. Now, when you look at this dashboard, it looks like a General Motors product from 10 or 15 years ago, and that's because it is. It is an ancient GM product that they barely upgraded because they haven't really needed to. The steering wheel is out of something, well, probably 10 years old. These climate control tops easily 20 years old front and rear climate control, but they did try and dress it up a little bit. Now keep in mind they do everything here in house. And the only gripe I really have of this interior is they don't do the real oak or real wood like they did in the old conversion bands. They actually take this plastic off and they dip it in their own dipping machine, whatever they have to make it look like wood. Now it does look pretty good as far as automotive finishes go, but there's no replacing it for the, the real thing, the real wood. Yeah, but look at this key also. Something out of a, a 2007, the fob and the key, but uh, the noise too. It's like going back in time. And same with this infotainment screen, it does feel very, very dated. But if you're into the old school luxury experience where you don't care about technology, like me, this is the perfect vehicle. It still has power windows, locks, automatic headlights, cruise control, all that stuff, all the stuff you need, but not all the crap that you, you never knew you needed. And then when you had it, it's, it's like vibrating seats in a Denali to know you're about to hit something. Why do you need that when you have a backup camera and, and sensors? But in the front, you can see some Explore custom touches. You have a little reading light here. There's an upgraded stereo. You can see it's a Rockford Fosgate little tweeter there. So the speakers are upgraded, but this is the controls for the rear and that's where things get really, really fun. One more thing before I go though, this cup holder down here, the center console setup is also a cooler because why not? It's, it's absolutely brilliant to have a cooler right where you can reach it and then you have five cup holders for all of your drinks. It's just absolutely brilliant. Well, let's head to the back. The first time I stepped in the rear, my mind was absolutely blown because just look at this. Look at this. Are you, are you kidding me? The mood lighting, the captain's chairs, this thing is basically like a limousine meets a private jet and the Lion King is playing on the TV right now, but it still has the old school mood lighting throughout like a limousine. And then look at this roof panel with that side skylight that goes all the way around. And for some reason they even fitted a sunroof back here, which is just crazy. Why a sunroof? I have no idea other than to be like a limousine so I can stand up here if someone's driving me and be like uh, Richard Gere and Pretty Woman looking for my uh, prostitute that I fell in love with. But we can close that up and close the shade. And speaking of shade, all the windows back here come with their own blinds that you can raise and lower because you could camp out in this thing. You could almost live out of this thing, mostly because of what I'm sitting on, but I'll get to that in a bit. These seats, despite being captain's chairs, and keep in mind, this is nine passenger. You have three rows in the back, two in the front. They are very adjustable. And these seats can also spin all the way around. As you pull this knob and you can spin all the way around, recline it back the other way. There you go. And that seat will move back as well to where you can have kind of a conference in here and it becomes much more like a private jet. Seat belt wise, this disconnects and then attaches to the seat as a lap belt. So they've figured out everything. They've made it all legal. So the seats have a lot of configurations, but the coolest one is with this bench in the back. And look at all the speakers everywhere and all the cup holders, which are lit and the center console that has all the plugs you could ever need and a Blu-ray player, which is what's going on right now up here. This is like a 28, 30 inch television. Now, as we move to the rear, keep in mind that most three row SUVs, when you use the third row, the rear cargo area is completely compromised. You have zero room. And this Explorer van has four rows of seating. And despite that, with everything in place, look how much room there is. There is a ridiculous amount of room for luggage, for your nine passengers, and there's even a vacuum in here, a little dirt devil, so you can clean up messes in the van 
as you go, another power plug. But the coolest part back here is the transformation of the seat. I hit this button and look at this. Look at this. I've just converted the rear bench into a full-size bed. A very, very comfortable, very nice full-size bed. Now, I'm a little tall, so my feet hang off the edge. But when you take the headrest off and close the doors, I could fit if I laid diagonally. And basically, I have an apartment. An apartment with mood lighting, a sunroof, and a television, which when I hotspot it to my phone, I can I can't watch YouTube. I, I can't actually watch YouTube in this van. So you're probably impressed, but you're also thinking, well, for passengers, this is an amazing experience. But if I was stuck driving this tugboat, I would be absolutely miserable. And that can't be further from the truth. These things are great to drive. Yes, they're big, but uh, they're great, which I'll demonstrate right now. It sounds the part, just listen to this vortex. Yes. It's quiet. All right, out on the road, and yes, this is a big, giant, wallowy conversion van. It is as big as they make them, but it's not that much bigger than, say, a full-size, long wheelbase Escalade or Denali. But the ride, in my opinion, is better than the newest Escalades or Denali, and that's because of this old-school suspension setup that dates back to the 90s. Driving this thing really feels like you're driving, say, an older Escalade or Denali from, you know, 2003 or so. It's just something you can't get with new cars. Even though they have magnetic ride control that adaptive suspension to try and soften it up quite a bit, but still make it handle well, it just doesn't feel the same. That means for sure in a slalom course, this thing would lose. And it is slower because it has the old school six liter Vortec, but it doesn't have all the things that go wrong with modern General Motors products. That cylinder deactivation in the 6.2 liters, it's plagued those engines for years now. They sludge up and you have to tear down or replace the entire engine. That's not an issue with these old things, the LQ9, I believe, the old six liter Vortec. It is slow, but who cares? It gets up and goes, it gets on the highway just fine, and it tracks really straight, really smooth, I mean, it doesn't have auto driving features, but it drives so straight and smooth that it really is driving itself right now. I'm not giving it any steering input right now. Oh, whatever it was, 10 seconds before I had to correct because of the slight curve of the road to the right. They're just that good. And the seat, as I said before, is so, oh, this is, oh, this is so nice. But there are a few drawbacks. The size of this one does make it a little bit harder to park, but if you don't need the nine passenger long wheelbase, you can get one a normal seven passenger one. Also that high top roof, it's a few inches under eight feet, which means taller garage doors you can fit under, but if you have a seven foot tall garage or most car washes, it won't fit inside automatic car wash, none that I've found. But you can get one of these without the high top roof and you probably lose the cool TV and some of the mood lighting setup, which I would never give up. But even without that, this thing is way nicer for passengers to ride in. You have more room, you have more space. And for a driving standpoint, just going down the highway or driving the kids to school, this is way better than a Denali or Escalade. If you don't care about technology and if you care about what's important with luxury cars, quality, custom work, craftsmanship, and comfort. Comfort most importantly. And this thing has all the comfort. The styling may be a little much for some, uh, but uh, for me, I think it's great. So there's one other thing, does it do burnouts? Which is why I'm on this deserted road right now. Just kind of curious myself. Let's see, traction control off, power braking. I don't think so. No. Sadly, there's too much weight back there to pull off a burnout, but an escalator to Nolly probably can't do a burnout either without some serious modifications. So it's a draw in that respect, but you're probably also thinking, well, a Denali or an Escalade has four-wheel drive and all-wheel drive for when it snows that two days a year and I need it. Uh, but you can also order one of these with four-wheel drive. They used to make express vans with four-wheel drive. They don't anymore, but Explore, the conversion company, can buy all the parts and put it on this van, and it looks exactly the same as a stock two-wheel drive like this. But you really with all this weight you, you, you don't need four-wheel drive so I'm really having a hard time figuring out why anybody would buy an Escalade or a Yukon Denali over one of these maybe it'll come to me when I park right next to one for comparison <laughs> okay when you do park the two next to each other the van does tower over 
for the Denali, and that's just because of the high top on this thing. It does look ridiculous. But lengthwise, uh, it's about the same. I don't know exactly, but it looks to be within a foot of each other, this Yukon XL Denali versus this long wheelbase van. So if you got the shorter wheelbase one, it'd probably be just a bit shorter. But when you look at these things side by side, you sit in these modern GM seats. Look at the kind of bland interior. Now, don't get me wrong, the interior of this thing is way nicer than most modern cars today. It still is very comfortable, and there is some technology that I like that this one doesn't like the keyless go, the heads-up display, and it is easier to drive and park, of course. But then when you look inside of this thing, you see the hand-built quality of this van, the custom coach work that you really can't get anymore outside of something like this. There's really there's really no comparison. It makes this Denali look cheap. And that's why when I saw this 2016 Explorer van advertised for sale for less than half of what they go for new, I couldn't help myself. I didn't hesitate. I bought it. This is, this is actually my van. So now I have two giant conversion vans. I mean, can you blame me? Thank you for watching.